Welcome to Capitol Hill Mixtape, presented by RIAA. I'm your host, Tom Cleese. Welcome to Capitol Hill Mixtape. I'm your host, Tom Cleese. And today we have the opportunity to talk to the advocate, the educator, the congressman from New York City, Congressman Jamal Bowman. The congressman has a well-known history as a super fan of hip hop. So I was hoping today to, to get even further down the line that we usually do. Usually we're like, hey, what's your favorite song? I wanna get into the intersection of politics and woo today. Uh, but before we do that, Congressman, thank you so much for being with us today. We really appreciate it. Of course. Good to be with you. Tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, where you're from and what drove you into public service. Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm from Manhattan, New York City, uh, the Upper East Side, East Harlem uh, section of Manhattan, uh, born in Metropolitan Hospital in 1976. Uh, went to public schools all my life, raised by a single mom, along with my, my three sisters. Um, went to college at the University of New Haven, graduated and got into teaching in 1999, started my career teaching um, in the South Bronx, did that for six years before becoming a high school dean of students, before opening up my own district public, not charter, middle school uh, in the Northeast Bronx, where I served for for 10 and a half years. Uh, and it was just that experience, I guess, like the education experience, you know, when you're in education, like all of society's issues kind of intersect at your doorstep. So if kids are dealing with mental health challenges or food insecurity or housing insecurity or issues related to criminal justice entanglement, all of the complex traumas that happen in our historically marginalized communities, uh, I kind of worked with those and dealt with those as an educator. So when you see that, you know, as an educator, you begin to feel sort of powerless in terms of what you can do within the school walls. So, you know, running for Congress and getting into public service in that way uh, was sort of my way of just wanting to try to have, you know, a bigger impact on uh, the lives of my kids and families. But teaching is public service, you know, and I kind of got into teaching by accident. First public service was teaching, uh, then serving as a middle school principal, and now, now I'm serving, serving in Congress. So when you decided to make that leap, you know, from one form of public service to another, obviously Congress is a whole different deal. Yeah. Uh, when you were gearing up for that first campaign, and it was one that you know, people all around the country were watching, it was a, a very high energy campaign. You unseated a longstanding incumbent. Uh, what were you listening to? at that time? Is there is there a song that's always going to take you back to saying, okay, you know what, I'm going to go for this, you know, even if it sounds crazy on the surface, I'm going to do it. Yeah. So the first song that comes to mind is Triumph uh, by the Wu-Tang Clan. Uh, while I was running, um, the Young Turks wanted to do like a, a, wanted to cover the race and do like a piece on just me in the community, introducing myself and interacting with people. So they did this, they, they, they followed me around for a couple of days and they put together this amazing uh, video and, and, and piece. And there was a part of the video where, where we were, it just organically happened. Like I literally got in my, my, my car, they were sitting in the passenger seat and I'll put the, 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 the Apple music, I hit shuffle and the song Triumph by Wu-Tang Clan came on. So that's kind of like, I guess, captures captures the campaign, you know, not only because of the song and the and the and the horns and the and the bass line and the lyrics, but also obviously we 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 ultimately won. But just so you know, I mean, and you probably know this if you follow me, my my in heavy rotation at all times is some form of of hip hop, particularly hardcore hip hop, particularly uh, late eighties, early nineties hip hop, mixed in with like Kendrick and J Cole and and all of that. So it's, that's always in rotation at some point. So, and you're right. There have been a lot of interviews talking to you about your love of Wu Tang. I'm not going to rehash any territory that has already been down there. But you know, is there something about the voice that you see hip hop giving young people? that you would draw attention to, specifically if you were trying to encourage young people to get involved in public service and to maybe think a little bit more about how politics impacts their communities? Yeah, so, you know, hip hop is 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 healing. Uh, hip hop is is hope. Hip hop is, is humanity. 
Um, and and hip hop for me was my source of identity. You know, as an African American, you know, we often grow up not knowing our history, our culture, or where we come from um, because of the history of my ancestors being, you know, stolen and traded from our homeland and then brought here into foreign land and, you know, the history of slavery and Jim Crow and all of that. So we pretty much lost our history. So hip hop was sort of my my reintroduction to who I was as a black man. And thank God, so many of those artists uh, sort of did the work of rediscovering their history um, and specifically artists like for me, you know, KRS-One and, and Chuck D from Public Enemy and Rakim from Eric B and Rakim and Brother J from X-Clan and Queen Latifah and Moni Love and Brand Nubian. And there's just so many other artists that just you know, help me to plug into who I was as a, as a black man and as a human being. So that that was very important for me. So I'm going to follow this up with a, a very unfair and impossible question. But, you know, you talk about finding that kid, uh, you know, educating them, helping them understand uh, the, the history that is wrapped up in hip hop that helped you find that. What album are you giving that kid? <laughs> All right, let me say what three albums are you giving that? <laughs> no, say, no. I, I mean, listen, that was that is yeah. that is an unfair question, but I did have an answer. The answer was going to be it takes a nation of millions to hold us back by public enemy, um, which I think came out in 89. Uh no, actually prior to 89. But to your point, I mean, it can't just be one album, right? So that would be one of them. Welcome to the Terran Dome, which is the follow up from Public Enemy, which I think was their third studio album, would be another. Um, Edutainment uh, by Boogie Down Productions uh, would be another. Um, X Clan to the East Blackwoods would be another. Um, Big Puns, Capital Punishment makes the list because of he was the first uh, Puerto Rican Latino rapper. That was like a brilliant MC to go to go platinum and get critical acclaim. There's so many, man. I know you said three, but those are those are a few uh, that come to mind. Illmatic by Nas, um, but gun to my head, gun to my head, it would probably be okay. And I didn't even say this in the first list, uh, but by any means necessary, by Boogie Down Productions is also another. Oh yeah. It might be that. It might be that one gun to my head by any means necessary. Okay. Well, I, I hope that young people watching this, if they do, understand the syllabus they were just given. This is your assignment. There will be a quiz at the end in our next episode. But um, but hold on, no, hold on. But I didn't I didn't say any Kendrick albums. And like I'm like like embarrassed to say that I'm late on Kendrick. You know, like I was stuck in the 90s. I was a stuck in the 90s baby. So I didn't get with Kendrick until later. And when I got with him, I'm like, this dude is incredible. So, you know, the damn album and or the most recent album um, are both incredible. You know, Mr. Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. Well, to actually make it personal. And what I wanted to say when you said you were late on Kendrick is, you know, you've been a little busy. Uh, you've had some things going on. And let's talk about that a little bit, you know. You became a member of Congress at a time that was so unprecedented. And the way you did it, you were right at the center of a lot of energy and a lot of people who are, they are disaffected with the way that things are going and you're creating new avenues for that energy. And I'm sure that that makes it you know, as stressful, if not more stressful um, than the average person who has to do this very, very crazy job that you do. So when you're getting ready to go out there and speak on a major issue, you know, whether it's the, the issues that you're very, very passionate about or the issues that are more on the wonky side that you wish more people knew about, yeah. you know, what either pumps you up or helps you get out of that headspace and, and just be a human being again in the evening? Yeah, you know, I love people. You know, I love all kinds of people from all walks of life. And I like really listening um, and, and really trying to understand. I, and that's why I often tell people, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a traditional politician. I'm an educator. So I, I take an educator's approach uh, to, the, to the work that I do. So just to get out there and, and, and be with the people is what I love the most. And, 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 and I, I'm, I would like to think I'm always human. Like I, I don't have to 
there's not an on off switch. Like I'm always human first and that's the feedback we receive. And, and that's like the most, the most powerful feedback, right? People feel I'm authentic. People feel I'm approachable. People feel I'm humble. People feel like they could connect with me. You know, I love that more than anything else. And, you know, quick story I ran into, I was at a bunch of Memorial Day events. I give normal speeches talking about my path and education, got to Congress, whatever. And this, uh, you know, African-American young man came over to me after, and he was just like, he, he, he was incredulous. Like he, he was in awe, shock and awe in his face. Like how, like, I can't even comprehend how someone like you, who's just like me is in Congress right now. Like he couldn't even understand it. He's like, he's a teacher's assistant. He's trying to become a teacher. He's like, how are you in Congress? And it was, it was very moving um, and humbling. And he sent me a nice note afterwards. He was like, yo, I just want to, I want to talk with you just so I could be a role model like you. So, I mean, you got to understand, I'm the first Black man to hold a seat in U.S. history, and we got other Black men in the district who never even knew what a congressperson was, let alone to, like, talk with him, let alone for the person to remind them of themselves. Thank you so much for sharing that. I mean, this is something that, you know, I think a lot of people understand on some level the importance of representation, but when you really bring it home like that, um, that's that's something people want to know that they're included in the process and it's almost like a cliche to say it around here sometimes but to actually see when something goes off in someone's mind that this is possible for me maybe I could get involved um, that's really special you know and I really appreciate you sharing that with us um, well so if you don't need any music to help you you know get back into your normal state is there any music that you're forcing on your staff or maybe <laughs> forcing your staff might be the wrong term? One of my comps people who's like 23 was like, oh, you got to listen to the Harry Styles album. So I was like, all right. And I listened to like two or three songs. I'm like, yo, this is banging. So I got to get up on Harry Styles. So so they put me on to music more than than I put them on. And and their tastes are is very diverse. I'm polarized in hip hop, which I don't like. You know, hip hop with a sprinkle of like reggae and R and B. Um, I, I, I need to expand more because when I was a kid, I used to like you know George Michael and Wham and Madonna and pop music because that's what was on TV. So I got to get more back into that. But they're they're educating me on it. I'm glad that there's an exchange going on. That's a really important uh, yeah. important piece. Well, one more question that I want to ask you before we let you go. Uh, is there something that you're working on right now that maybe isn't front and center, you know, that's that's not the stuff that gets you uh, mentioned on the news or anything, but that you want people to know more about? Yeah, a lot of things, man. We all know that um, uh, public safety has been an issue um, in the news and around the country for since COVID, since, since COVID started. It's been an issue for a while, but really since COVID started, it's really ramped up. And it's not just the daily gun violence and violence in uh, historically marginalized communities and communities of color, it's mass shootings that we're talking about now as well. So we've been doing a lot of work around really uplifting or centering a public health approach to public safety, which yes, involves accountability. Yes, involves gun trafficking, but also looks at the social determinants of health um, so that we can be preventative and proactive in hopefully stopping crime and harm before it happens in the first place. Um, and then helping my colleagues to understand that, you know, you, you, you want to support the current the criminal justice system in its current form. Um, I disagree with that because I think it needs to be dramatically transformed. So we need to start talking about rehabilitation, right? Because what we're seeing is, you know, people being arrested multiple times for minor things, but they're not being rehabilitated. And then they come out and the harm continues to escalate. We have to rehabilitate people when they go in and we have to deal with the complex traumas and the social determinants of health, like diet and housing and mental health and all that stuff to be preventative. And it happens in our schools as well. You know, just me as an example, if I didn't have music and sports and play as a kid, 
um, the trauma from my father not being around and the sexual assault that I experienced personally could have derailed me to the point where I, I did some of the things that my friends did, which was sell drugs, use drugs and, and end up dead or in jail. I got lucky and, and was fortunate because I had things to kind of like keep me out of that and keep me sort of in a structured, nurturing environment. And what, what I want to do and what our office is working on is making sure that every single child in the country has a nurturing environment to lean on and to support them so that they could be put on a pathway towards their own uh, fulfillment and joy and happiness. So that's what we're working on, man. And that takes a variety of forms, legislation, advocacy, and other stuff, grants and what have you. Uh, but that's the focus, man. That's, that's the mission. Um, and I hope that you find the consensus that you're you're hoping to build. Uh, Congressman Jamal Bowman, thank you so much for taking time with us and talking to us today. This has been Capitol Hill Mixtape. I'm Tom Cleese. And we look forward to seeing you all again. Peace and love.